in this video, I am going to tell you about my first impressions of this highly touted motor, lightweight motor from Boss called the Boss Performance Line SX. It claims lightweight modular batteries, 55 newton meters, and up to 600 watts. Okay, it's been out in Europe for a few weeks, maybe months, and this is one of the first ones to land here in the US of A. And we are here at Laguna Seca Monterey, and I have the wonderful opportunity of test riding this Norco Fluid VLT, very light bike, 42 pounds. What's special about it is it has the new motor, one of the first in the country, Bosch Performance Line SX for mid-powered bikes. So mid-powered bikes are the second coming of e-bikes. After those full-powered 50-pound bikes, we needed a new solution for 40-pound bikes, something closer to the mountain bike. And what Bosch has promised here or kind of spec sounds really promising. You know, 55 newton meters, but up to 600 watts, a 400 watt hour battery, but 250 watt extenders. So, wow, this is what we've been looking for. 160 watt extenders are on the TQ motor and the Levo cell, but oh, that's a little small. This has a good extender and 50 newton meters and 300, 400 watts, not quite there. Pretty good, but if you're a heavy guy, not super fit, it's a little hard, you can't keep up with your buddies and it's hard to go on long range rides. So this motor has been so interesting, at least on the spec sheet. And I'm here to tell you my first impressions after climbing with it for an hour. That's mostly what I did, not too much descending. And first impressions are, it is a version one product that is already quite polished, you know, because Bosch has so much experience. The responsiveness is very good. A very good torque sensor on this has four modes of support and the 55 newton meters sounds just right. You know, it's, right like the Patsua motor uh, with uh, between the Levo, new Levo SL, 50 newton meters, Patsua motor between 50 and 60 newton meters, and this one claims 55 newton meters. So it's got some grunt to it, but not a whole lot. And their real trick up their sleeve, aside from the modular battery system, is the 600 watts that they claim. 600 watts is insane uh, because that's what, that's more than the full-size Levo claims that's maybe right around what Bosch is willing to divulge, especially on their race motor. Uh, there's Gen 4 uh, CX race motor, and this one claims 600 watts. And let me tell you, uh, just let's cut to the chase, it does not feel like 600 watts. It's, uh, nah. Climbing these 16% grades at Monterey, you know, I went, I went full in. It feels, honestly, it feels like about 450 watts, you know, a little more than the Fatsua, but right around the Fatsua. The Fatsua, uh, the latest version, seems to have a little more torque than this, which they claim 60. This one's 55. This one seems honest with the 55, but the 600 watts, uh, it's a stretch. It's a stretch. Um, and the reason that is, is this motor is kind of special. Uh, it tries to live with lightweight, a small motor and a small battery, but it doesn't offer a lot of torque. It doesn't a lot of offer a lot of low end power. So like a diesel, uh, it's not, it's far from it. It wants you to rev your RPMs yourself uh, to get to the 600 watts, to tap that part of the motor. But let me tell you how it felt on the, on the flats and the rolling hills, it did feel good. It did feel like you have 500 to 600 watts. I go, okay, this feels like my Levo or it feels like my, my pivot shuttle. Uh, but as soon as the hills really steepened up, oh, it, it felt like, you know, right, it, it struggled, it struggled. So if you are starting from a, a, uh, in the middle of a hill and you're trying to pick up speed, it's nothing like a Levo or a, uh, uh, a, a Trek rail. Uh, it, uh, it's, it's easy to keep going. So I think that's the good thing about this motor is with the initial push, it gives you a lot of its power right away, even with very slow startup. Uh, it doesn't need you to work super hard, unlike the Levo cell. But to get to the upper reaches of power, I go, okay, I'm starting now, give me more, more power. You really had to rev the RPMs, but not only that, you could rev your RPM all that, all you want, you know, low gear, but you're not getting really any power. You're not speeding up. You have to shift down. You have to shift down. And then at a certain point, you know, you can't really just push the motor, push your body, push the gears and the motor to get the 600 watts. 
it's it's quite far from the full powered uh, experience. That's for sure. And I knew that, but I was willing to put out, you know, put the RPM in, but I couldn't do it. So, and for that reason, I say it's no, it doesn't feel like a 600 watt water on on steep climbs. Uh, and then at a certain point, I got some momentum, and I said, I'm going to come in through this hot, the 60% grade, and I ran out of steam. <laughs> I started to shift down, and I tried to pick my speed back up, and I, there was no way to be, pick my speed back up. The way it feels super powerful is on, on, on rollers, on flats and rollers. As you're climbing, getting speed 15, 16 miles an hour, you put on a high gear, the thing is, is pulling, pulling, it's pulling good. The problem is at 20 miles an hour, the motor shuts off, or 19, motor shuts off, and then you got no more. So I feel like if you had a gravel bike that had a 28 mile hour speed limit or a commuter bike, you'll be able to tap into that uh, flat speed, rolling speed power, you know, may, maybe get close to the 600 watts that it wants because it wants to rev up and it wants you to contribute and it wants to be in a high gear to get all that power. How you really want to use it, this is a match made in heaven. It wants you to shift a lot. Um, it wants you to shift, shift under power, keep your momentum and the SRAM transmission, I think is almost required for the system uh, because on a normal Levo or a shuttle, uh, full powered, you don't have to shift that much. You know, you can just grunt it out and it is gonna accelerate, gonna give you all it's got. This thing, you have to shift, 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 shift. And you have to shift under power so you maintain your momentum. And the transmission is really good at that. Um, so, you know, definitely a the motor is made for the, the shifting system and the shifting system is made for this motor. It's a match made in heaven. So I would definitely recommend this combination. But what does that mean? That means that, hey, this is still an incredible system because it's kind of on par with what's out there and it's got the modular system of battery. I believe 400 watts on the main battery and it looks pretty sleek and the 250 watt extenders are here in the flesh. Uh, 250 watt extender is really good. It's like the Orbea uh, Rise and it's a lot more than the 160s on the TQ motors and the Olivo SLs. I think you really need to have 250 watts um, or 200 watts to have a meaningful extender because you have all that case and cabling and whatnot. So really good versatility on this machine. On a gravel bike, adventure bike commuter, this thing will be bang on because you could go 28 miles an hour without being too heavy. And I think that's the sweet spot of the motor. It's, it's, a, it's a high revving motor uh, that maybe is willing to generate kind of, uh, like a VTEC motor or a turbo motor. So what is the bottom line? The bottom line is this Motor, I think, mid, like mo most mid-powered bikes, is no replacement for a full-powered. Uh, you'll get the range with the modularity, but if you want the, if you have steep hills, if you want that, you know, that 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 torque or torque in RPM combined for watts, uh, this this you you definitely have to be fit. And I don't think you're gonna get you're gonna keep up with your full-powered buddies, uh, even though it claims you all have 600 watts. You know, when the, when the going gets steep, you know, you're going to get left behind. But if you're an athlete, you want to work, uh, this can reward you as you get into the high RPMs. But good torquey motor, feels like 500 watts, maybe 450, and a really good uh, battery, modular battery system with a very advanced uh, tuning uh, and controls. Thanks a ton, everybody.